good evening, everyone. I'm Dido from the Killing Team. It's a hi, hello. It's a great honor for me to be here presenting my team to you, and I'm actually super excited to be in Sydney. Same. Same. <laughs> Is the first time to be in Sydney? Uh, no. Okay. I've been I've been e meeting and also e chatting with a lot of our Aussie supporters, either from the Telegram group or other platforms. So, but I think it's always better to have this face-to-face -face communication to you guys offline. So I'm super excited. So hopefully we have the we have a wonderful time for the following 15 minutes. Okay. So I'll start with the storytelling. Storytelling first. Let's meet this young lady, Ella. She's a 14. She's a 14 young lady studying at high school, and. Her favorite daily routine is like after she wakes up and then scrolling through through her Facebook page or Instagram and see how many people upvotes for her for her or likes her pictures. So this is the daily routine. This is the everyday scenario of our life. So see how much we rely on the mobile network. As a result, because she's been so addicted to the SNS and her parents has to suspend the pocket money and also change the data plan for her. Instead, they have probably have a fairly limited data plan. So what she does is to constantly looking for free Wi-Fi hotspots on the go. That's a, that's a scene. Uh, this, what I'm facing every day in Australia these days, I've been looking for the wi free Wi-Fi hotspots. Let's see how, how, we re, how we rely on the mobile network. This is our everyday life, so sorry, there's something wrong with the font. I'll live with that. <laughs> and also, the problems we are facing right now is actually one of the biggest problems is the mobile network operators, is the operators. So on one hand, they have spending huge amounts of money on the construction of the telecommunication infrastructure. So see the, see the figures here? Like we have, basically, we have the figure here, we have 4.3 million telecom towers built up globally, in the global cities. We have 300 million Wi-Fi hotspots, and I believe this figure must be much bigger than this. And we have five billion smartphones in 2018. Probably this is a prediction. And let's let's look at uh, like the simplest format of a family. Let's say we have a family of two, a husband and wife. They have two smartphones at least, and they have one laptop respectively. And probably they have a router in their living space. So that's in total that those things add up to 500 G storage, 2 to 10 M fiber, and that actually add up to 9.9 .9 gigahertz computing power. That's a lot. That's, but how much we are using that? Of course, apparently, we haven't made the best of that. But on the other side, we have the, those people, they don't have the access to the broadband network. And that's not stable. And even in the US, the most developed country in the world, they have 37% of the population don't have the broadband access. That's the situation we are facing right now. So why, why so I, I believe that is the origin of the issue. That's the problem of the centralized mobile network. And that's what brought us to you right in front of you. That's what brought Killing in front of you. We are the world's first decentralized mobile network powered by blockchain, and we are also dedicated to network transmission, a, a dedicated ecosystem to, to network transmission. So why we say we are a decentralized ecosystem? What is a decentralized ecosystem? We would like to say the Q-Link users, they are highly self-regulating, which means there's no third party or centralized anything in between. And also, we are kind of a mobile social economy, which, which means we are kind of like those sharing economy platforms like Uber, 
like Kuaichu in China or like Airbnb. So basically, the Qlink users could exchange their end user resources using our platform. So this is the way it works. I would like to conclude, make a conclusion here in, in three words, transparent, trusted, and secure to describe our decentralized ecosystem. So let's take a, now let's take a brief look at the Qlink ecosystem, like all the factors and all the elements in, in this ecosystem. From the bottom to the top, we have four layers. So at the bottom, we have the devices. <coughs> the devices, you see this little icon here? That's actually the Qlink base station, which is a hardware device we are going to launch within this year, targeting, targeting this year, right? And that Q-Link base station would be actually used, you could, you could either use it as a Wi-Fi router in your living place, or it could be a portable device when you're on the go to, to extend the existing 4G coverage. Uh, basically, it would support uh, LTEU and also OpenBDS architecture consensus. And also, it will work with the other Q-Link base stations to contribute the computing power. It, it has mining power in it. it. So together with the other nodes, other uh, killing play stations, they could contribute the computer power to improve the security of the killing network. This is how it works. Uh, at the second layer, we have the public chain, which is the new public chain we're using. We're running on the new testnet right now. And at the third layer, we have the Q-Link chain, which is a public chain. I'll talk about it later. The DAP, I'll talk, it, talk about later. That's my favorite part, actually. Let's save it for later. So this is actually the focus of my presentation today, which is the Q-Link network and the, the architecture of the Q-Link network. We are the Qlink public chain, public chain is a dedicated ecosystem to, to network transmission. So I would like to say at the core of our Qlink public chain lies the Shannon consensus, which is also, or you don't have to Google it online, because it's developed by our team. It's actually a Qlink consensus. So this formula might look, it looked complicated to me uh, at the very beginning. We have three uh, parameters here, proof of space time, proof of retrievability, and proof of transmission. And why we come up with this? Because when it comes to network transmission, we always see this scenario, which is only 20% 20, 20 of the nodes, they are doing 80% of the job. So we, the killing team, we try to improve the proof of space time which could separate the working nodes from the ledger nodes, which means the working nodes will be only responsible for network transmission, and the ledger nodes will serve as the bookkeeper. This could prevent the network giants like Google from dominating or keeping the ledger, because they are, they, they are the giant. They have the huge capacity of network. And also, we, oh, sorry, there's a lacking of, we named this formula as Shannon consensus in the name of Klaus Shannon, who is the father of information theory. Okay, you can see at the top, we have all the protocols here. The P2P account sharing protocol, which means the Q-Link user actually could share their login username or their password without disclosing any further information. For the second, we have decentralized name resolution protocol, which means all the nodes could contribute the capability of translating the names. For example, the domain name or your any self-defined names. Also for that proof of retrievability, that's, that actually means, proof of retrievability means only the destination, destination nodes will store the content index dictionary. So we will open all these protocols and also one of the proof to all the developers help us build up this network together with us to improve the security of the, the network and also the ecosystem. 
this is what I'm talking about, the Q-Link Labs. If anyone here is a developer and you, either you are an individual or you have a team, you could feel free to come to us and approach us, see what you can contribute to the Q-Link ecosystem. Here comes my favorite part, the Killing Dev, because I am the product manager. And I have to say that from the Killing MVP, which was released in early January this year, it's quite early, and we have, it, it has been three months. So in this three months, we have come to the Killing Dev version 109. That's been, that turned out to be a long way, and it's, it's been painstaking, I have to say. We now have these three functionalities already realized in our dev, which, is, which are Wi-Fi sharing, uh, distributed VPN, and also Q-Link wallet. That's, sorry, that SMS hasn't been br brought in our dev. So uh, firstly, I will um, share with you a walkthrough video of our dev, see how it works. For the first part, we have a Wi-Fi sharing video. See how it works. Oh. Whoops. Uh, anybody? Are you an Apple guy? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think I can. I don't want to fuck it. Open with other, FYI, my fault. Don't watch videos on my laptop. So basically, this is the uh, walkthrough in, in introductory video about our Wi-Fi sharing functionality. Um, I would like to. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. This one is the slides one. The slides. Do I just go back on this page? This page. So I would like to introduce how this Wi-Fi sharing process work, what's the, play, what's the position of it in the whole ecosystem. So for Wi-Fi sharing, basically, you can either register a Wi-Fi asset or connect to a registered Wi-Fi asset using the killing dev. So for a Wi-Fi sharer or a Wi-Fi owner, to be precise, you could register your Wi-Fi uh, 
on the killing using the killing app just to just input your password, input the what the password of this Wi-Fi to to as a proof of ownership, and then you can set a price like your intended tips. Uh, the amount of QoS you, you would like to receive after that, and then also set the uh, limitation of the, the the maximum number of the uh, of the devices allowed to connect to your device. So that would be all, and then register and done. And you just probably consume one QLC to register your Wi-Fi asset as a digital asset on the on the new blockchain. Uh, after that, so this this. All the information would be will be registered on the blockchain. Include your Wi-Fi SSID, your MAC address, and also your Wi-Fi password. So after that, when a Wi-Fi user propose a request to connect to your Wi-Fi as registered Wi-Fi asset, she she can just simply by click a uh, click on that. You, you see that what little Wi-Fi icon just now in, in the video, and then she would be connected to your Wi-Fi asset. When she disconnects from your Wi-Fi asset, there would be, he, he, she can actually choose to tip or not. If she wished to tip just by inputting the, uh, the intended amount of tips, she would like 10 KLC or whatever 10 KLC is roughly, um, I think that's 1.5 US dollars for now and then send the, uh, send the tips to the, that, that tips, that, that amount of QLC will be, transmit, will be transferred to the Wi-Fi sharer's QLink wallet. So that is the whole process. So in this process, the Wi-Fi password from the Wi-Fi sharer to the Wi-Fi user will be transmitted through the P2B network, which means there's no centralized server or third party, anything involved in it. So you would never disclose your Wi-Fi password to anyone. So here I would like to call for like the small to medium business owner, like you are the bookstore owner or you're on a, you are running a coffee shop. And this, this Q-Link app could save you the troubles. Like you have to keep telling you, the customers what, what your password is, or it's not your customer really. They just come here to use your bathroom. You could save those troubles, definitely. Or you are the Airbnb host. This could definitely a huge relief for you, I promise. And now we have the Q-Link wallet, which is the second realized uh, fully functioning feature in our DAP. So you can, as you can see here, you can either receive QLC or send QLC or top up QLC with Neo in our DAP. It's fairly fast and stable, and we are already run a test on on, on the new test net. It's running very well, and we are targeting running run a real uh, run a test on the new mainnet very quickly, probably this week. I'll show you a. Uh, Video. <laughs> Sorry about troubling you. I'll, I'll try. Yeah, a walkthrough video. Okay. Uh, yeah, wallet. Uh, wallet. Wallet. That one. Where is it? File open with. Yes.
So that basically shows the process, how you send and receive QLC and also top up QLC with new. Uh, this 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 Pulink wallet is currently dedicated to the trading pair of NEO and QLC, but we are really looking forward to bringing more trading pair into our depth, such as uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, or we are even looking at fiat in the future. So if you any of you, yeah, have any, <laughs> that's I think that's kind of the like kind of a pain point of our users and we're looking to resolve it. So anyone if you have any interest, if you have any information, just feel free to approach us because we're really going to solve this problem. Okay, so, and there's one more thing actually, because we are currently running on the new testnet. So um, I, we understand it would be really, it would, it would be really a bad user experience. If you are a first time user, you open up our DAB and you found you have not no fonts to, to, to play with. So as a, let's say as a gift to our killing users or a, you're the beta users actually, we would like to, there would be one test name distributed to your wallet directly uh, when you create a new wallet. I, I know there's one QLC is probably useless, but I think it could be used as your initial fonts actually to play around with all the features and functionalities in our DAP and see how it works. So, and there's one more thing for me here to, okay, I'll finish the VPN first. So this VPN is actually, we don't have a short video for it yet because this is the latest realized feature in our DAP. We've been overcome. We've be, we've overcome a lot of obstacles when we are trying to realize this functionality. And now, so basically, this is a little bit similar to the wallet. How it works, you can either register a VPN server, a VPN asset using the Kulink app, or or you can uh, just connect to a VPN server. But this is a, a different thing between the Wi-Fi and VPN. This this is a paid service. You have to pay for the VPN server owner, and how much you will have to pay is actually depends on how the, wife, the, the VPN owner, say, say they can set a price, and I want 10 QLC probably per hour for, 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 for the others, uh, the, the VPN, for my VPN client, then you will have to cost 10 QLC. And actually this is quite interesting, this is a little bit tricky, because in our, when, when we are running a test, an uh, internal test actually, one guy from our, our uh, from our R and D team, he earned like 118 QLC within six hours, just in that internal testing. So this could be actually used in very, I, I think, in very diversified commercial scenarios. We are really looking forward to see how this could uh, grow our better use in in the lo in the global communities. Okay, here's one thing I would like to say today, because we are just one mile from the global rollout, because all the functionalities here, we have already, they, they have already been fully functioning in our DAP, and we have really good feedbacks from our better users. So here, when I am in uh, Sydney right now, I would like to seize this opportunity to make a call for city ambassador here. We are calling for city ambassador in Sydney. So if you are interested, just feel, feel free to contact me. So what does a city ambassador do? Basically, you need to, we, we, we will work really close with you. So you will be in charge of uh, building up the local community and also growing our better user. Uh, growing the number of the Q-Link registered Wi-Fi hotspots or the registered VPN access, that would be your responsibility. And of course, there will be handsome rewards or bounties after that, but we could discuss about it later. Okay, so we will, we would really like to take this uh, chance or opportunity to have talents on, on board with us. Here comes our achievements. Uh, actually, we concluded our ICO like in, in December last year, and that turned out to be a big success, and also it's a uh, police war. We concluded with, uh, I think it's within six minutes after we started the cross sale. 
And then we are currently listed on KuCoin and also Gate.io and Tidebit. We will be listed on CoinNest, which is a Korean exchange later. So I think that's all for today. Remember the city ambassador call, so feel free to come to me. Um, I'll be around. Thank you.